How's it going, everybody? It's me, producer guy Phil PGP. You know me, you know this face, but today, I've never really done this before, so it's kind of new. I got an interview with uh, one of my good friends. I've known this kid for many, many years. The first time I ever saw him was at our fairgrounds. He was just a tiny little pup with pretty nice hair, I'm not going <laughs> to lie, and nothing's really changed. He's got the nice hair now. He's got the awesome Lee sweater. Uh, Mr. Braden Barry, say we can fly. Check out his stuff on iTunes. Braden, how have you been, man? Dude, I've been good. I actually haven't cut my hair since that day. <laughs> <laughs> no. You're like, you know what? We're growing it. That's it yeah. now. <laughs> no, I've been good, man. I'm, I'm good. It's good to talk to you again. And yeah. It's Thanks cool, man. I've wanted to do this for a while. Like, I've wanted to catch up with you for a while. But, like, uh, I mean, you're you're definitely a busy guy now. And that's really cool to see. But it's pretty awesome now to get this opportunity to actually speak with you, speak with things we both love. And but so, you know, to break the ice, man, like, how have you been the last five years? Like, um, what have you been up yeah. to? I think a lot of people know. But what have you been up to? Yeah. Um, man, I've just, been, I've just been touring and a lot and, you know, writing and just kind of adventuring all over the place. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, I've been like in the U.S., U.K., Europe, and um, I haven't really, I haven't played as much in Canada as I would have liked, you know. But I'm hoping to do that this year. Um, but yeah, man, I've really just been like working my ass off to make this, um, you know, full time job and just uh, do all I can and play for as many people as I can and watching a lot of movies and uh, yeah, drinking a lot of coffee. That's cool, man. Like, I, I really respect that, that you're actually, you know, taking your talents to, like, overseas in different countries and various things like that. Because, like, a lot of us growing up with you, we saw you play, and, like, a lot of us knew you had that talent. So it's really cool to kind of see you spread your gift and spread your talent all over the world. And, like, what's that like, you know, when you say you go to the UK and you go to the US? What's it kind of like for you to kind of see people reacting to your music and kind of, you know, digging it and vibing it? Like, what's that, what's that like for you as an artist to see that? Dude, I mean, it's it's cra It's never gonna not be like amazing, you know. Like, you know, when we were in high school and stuff, it's like I, when I started Say We Can Fly, I never really like expected it to turn into something like you know that I could take you know all over the world or whatever. And like, I never really thought anybody else would listen, you know. But those like those moments, I always think back, you know, to like when I was like just playing little stuff around Lindsay, you know what I mean? Like that. If I, if it wasn't for the people that supported me back then, like I wouldn't be doing it still. But it's. It's amazing, man. It's like I, I'm so thankful for everyone who cares, and you just gotta, you gotta, you gotta remember it's all about the people that listen, you know. Exactly, man. And that's like one of the coolest parts too, especially about music, is that like music offers so many people an escape, you know, like a way to express their creativity, especially with like you and your songs. Like it offers you a way to like express what you're feeling and like moments and stuff you're going through and that's the cool thing about that is it touches a lot of people in that way that music yeah. can offer that kind of escape and that's really cool when you find an outlet like that like you find something you can just grab onto like for me growing up it was music too and as of more so recently it's been video games and i know a lot of people on here on this channel that's basically their escape too so i gotta ask you man um what was your very first memory that you can recall of you, like, holding, like, a console or playing a video game? What was the first memory you can recall? Yeah, dude, well, so I think my first ever, I remember, like, when, when Game Boy, I, I, I kind of missed Game Boy Color. I, I wasn't, like, exposed to it, you know? Yeah. Early enough. My friend had one, uh, but my own first, like, I remember my, it was, like, close to my birthday or something, and I wanted a Game Boy Advance so bad. Like, oh. I was like, either, you know? And so, like, I remember my, I was in the car with my grandmother, and she, like, pulled over. And she, like, pulls out, like, a box. And I'm like, holy shit, like, it was a Game Boy. And she had got me, like, a Scooby-Doo game. Oh, I can't dude. remember exactly which one, but that was, like, and I just, that's all I did, you know what I mean? Like, it was just this black and white, like, Scooby-Doo. And I, I I didn't even have one of those, like, lights, because you had to get the lights to the Yeah. Attached. So I <laughs> those are like, weird, dude. Like, um, but, yeah, that was, man, that was my first uh, console was Game Boy Advance. And um, Scooby-Doo was my first game, and. That was that, you know? It's a great moment. Man, like, I, I, I remember, I, I had the same, like, kind of story, too. Like, I remember when I got my Game Boy Advance, and it was just like, you just see this thing, it's like that rectangle, you're just kind of, like, holding it and things <laughs> like, like that. And your mind's <laughs> like, what is this? It's got color. And then you realize you can't play it after 8 p.m. because there's no light, and you're like, hold on, hold on. Yeah. I think I see Shaggy right there. Hold on, I think I got this. I think we're doing okay. Um. Yeah, and <laughs> so what other games did you get for that like like eventually um, did you get more like what did you get for that so i'm trying to remember i ha I know i had i had a finding nemo game uh well, i think one of my favorites was donkey kong i think it was country donkey kong country maybe it that was more like one. early ones um i didn't have like a ton of games but yeah that one I, I did have a mario 
Mar- Super Mario something. It was it was what, the first one where he was like a raccoon, like he had like wings. Oh, that was that was that Mario one, Three, yeah. Whatever one that was, yeah, that one was great, and it was really hard. <clears throat> dude, and that game is unforgiving. <laughs> I dude, I, I I've never really talked about this, but I'll tell you that. Oh, okay. I, when I when I when I used to get angry, like, cause I would get really angry at my video games, like I would. <laughs> I would bite the controllers and sh- <laughs> No, dude, I literally, like, I I got so... I, I remember playing Donkey Kong, and I got so pissed because I couldn't be this level, and I bit my Game Boy, and I... <laughs> and I told my parents that it, like, fell out of my cupboard, and I was, like, crying, and... Dude, it was, it was a heavy moment, man. <laughs> it was yeah. a heavy moment. Dude, I don't blame you. I think we all still get that reaction. I love yeah. that, like the two games you picked are like the ones that like are most like sometimes can be rage inducing. Like Donkey Kong Country, man, you get into those like further levels, like in the ice and like the factory. Like oh. it's unforgiving. And then in Mario Three, like <laughs> once you get to like I'd say World Six, we have to go like up in the clouds, and then you get to like oh World Seven, oh, yeah. forget it. The pipe maze, I... forget it, dude. So yeah. done. I like yeah, that you was... bite the controller. That's that's a new one. I don't think I've ever heard that one before. Dude, yeah, man, it was bad. Like, <laughs> I, I struggled with that for sure. Or, like, if I was playing somebody on, like, GameCube or something and I was losing, I would literally just turn it off. Like, if I was <laughs> race, I would just turn it off. So, <laughs> anyway, not, yeah, I got over that, thankfully, but. Oh, well, you know what? Like, power to you because I still can't get over it. I remember, um... Like, when I was living with a couple of friends, uh, we used to play, like, NHL a lot, because obviously huge hockey fans, and it was, like, with the Xbox One, so I'd have my controller. Whenever, like, a stupid goal got scored on me, I wouldn't even look, like, I would just throw the controller behind me, and I'd hear the <laughs> thunk on the wall, and I had, like, white walls, so I'd pick up my controller afterwards, you'd see, like, stripes on the bottom. <laughs> And uh, a mutual friend of ours, Hemsey, used to did, like differentiate our controllers because he's like, yep, that's Phil's. It's got the rage stripes on it. <laughs> it's, got the rage stripes. it's got the rage stripes on it because when it would hit the wall and it yeah. would like um, <laughs> never like because everyone else was be immaculate. I would just have like the white on the bottom. But that's that, that's pretty cool that like, I've never heard of that biting the controller. Yeah, it was brutal. <laughs> so um, with a lot of traveling, uh, do you uh, like get around to playing games on the road? Do you got like a PS Vita? Do you got like a 3DS? Or do you like play like emulators <clears throat> and stuff online? Like what Dude, do you like to do now? Like how do you catch up on games now on the road? Um, sorry, ma'am. Uh, yeah, you know what? Honestly, dude, I um, I haven't been able to play as much in the last like three years as I, as I wish. You know, I, I did get like a Game Boy uh, that I was playing for a little bit, but I lost it like immediately on tour. Um, oh. And then Warp Tour 2015, the first year I played, my my girlfriend got me like this Pikachu Game Boy Color, like this Pokemon one, like I loved it, and I lost that. I left it on the bus. Oh, so it's like you know, I try to bring you know consoles, but I just lose them. Um, but <laughs> we, I did actually like one of the first times in a long time that I got to play because I, I had a GameCube. That was my first like not portable console, okay. and that's always going to be my favorite. But I left it at a at a motel. Actually, in Lindsay, I left it at a motel, and Aww. someone someone took it. So I, I didn't get to play GameCube for a long time. But actually, I was in the, I was in Europe last year, and I was in uh, I think it was Paris, France, and I literally played on a boat. Um, and it was really sketchy. But they had a GameCube, <laughs> and they had Mario Kart, and I just we played Mario Kart for like three hours, and it was awesome. Oh, so, that was cool. <laughs> do you do you have a GameCube or like any Game Boys now? Like, did you ever like replace them? Dude, yeah, actually, on my last tour that I did, my my friend Johnny, who was also on the tour for my birthday, got me a GameCube because he knew that someone took mine. Oh, uh, so yeah, so I have that now, which is amazing. Um, I do have a PS4, uh, which I play sometimes, play like Overwatch and Call of Duty sometimes. But um, yeah, man, I used to play Minecraft a lot too. But yeah, I mean, I I have I really want to get back into to games because I haven't. I used to play all the time, like on my GameCube, and I haven't really in a while. So, I'm get back into it. So, like, what what were some of your games that you really enjoyed on the GameCube? I know you said uh, Mario Kart. Was there like any mm-hmm. others that you got crazy into? Okay. Like you just devoted a lot of time to? Yeah, dude. So Animal Crossing oh. was uh, that was like my life, man, for a while. Like literally, that was like uh, as like around the time when I started Save We Can Fly too. Like I was playing that every day. And it was like a release, man. Like I, like you were saying earlier, it's like I would go home from school or whatever and just play that. And like I could play it all night and like not worry about anything. And I loved it. Um, and then I had Luigi's Mansion, which also was one of my favorite games ever. Uh, I remember, I don't know if you remember this, in, in the McDonald's in Lindsay, they had it. Remember they said GameCube? The in little there? toy, like the little kiosk. It had like four screens. You could, only, remember that. <laughs> you could only play up to like a certain point. So yeah, I had that. Uh, actually, that was the first game I got for GameCube. Was the Luigi's um, Mansion? It's a good and one. Super Mario Sunshine, obviously, 
you know, that's like a essential. And then a couple Lord of the Rings games. Um, I had the Incredibles, but yeah, I mean, Animal Crossing, Mario, and Mario Kart. Uh, oh, and Melee, of course. Oh so, yeah, that was. Yeah, so those were kind of my main go-tos. Who was, <clears throat> who was your main character in Melee? Who was like the who was the character you went to when you were playing with friends? Dude, honestly, it was usually D. Or actually, no, it was Pikachu. Nice. Either Pikachu or DK because you could do those super cheap like down. <laughs> they, oh. Nobody could get away from them. So yeah, I was usually one of those two. <clears throat> I remember that kiosk uh, pretty vividly because like I remember I got Super Mario Sunshine for Christmas and then whenever I go up to Lindsay to like uh, hang out with my dad and stuff when we go to like McDonald's I always used to get super upset because the kiosk would time you out after like a certain time and I could like I... breeze through the tutorial like get flood get like the first <laughs> shine and then boom cut off and I'm like why? I'm like why are you doing this to me? <laughs> Yeah, well, it was good marketing, I guess. It made you want to buy the game. I know. I'm like, <laughs> man, I just really want 10 nuggets, and I just want to play more Mario Sunshine. Like, let's go. Let's yeah. do this, man. Uh, did you ever end up paying off your house in Animal Crossing? Like, I don't ever think I did. I did, man. I got the um, I got the golden statue. Oh! I did, I did, I'm not going to lie. I did use the cheats a little bit. Oh, oh? Some bell cheats. But I, you know what? I did most of it pretty legit. Uh, a lot of it was fishing, man. I would fish a lot and sell the fish and whatever. Oh, uh, oh that's good. But yeah, no, I did end up doing that eventually. It was a big moment. What was it? There was like the red bass ones that were on like the very bottom that were worth like what three thousand bells or something. Whenever yeah. you caught them, dude, I you know I remember there was one time because like I almost had all the fish, and uh, that there was one time it was like a certain time of day, like three in the morning or something, and I went down and like the shadow, you know, like there's the shadows of the fish. Yeah, it was like massive, like huge, and uh, like the shadow was massive, and I'd never seen anything like that. It was like a rare one. And then I literally dropped my controller and like moved, and the fish scared the fish away, and I no! never found it. That was pretty sad. <laughs> oh, dude, that is such a bummer, man. Yeah, um, but it was a great game. Yeah, dude, I I can't rave about that game enough. Even the later ones were really good. But you know what? There's a lot of like neat games and stuff coming out like this year, or even games that have already come out. Is there any like uh, is there any ones that you're looking forward to that you see maybe previews and stuff for like footage? Is there anyone you're really looking forward to in particular? You know, I, I'm actually not super, like, hip to what's coming out. And, dude, I totally forgot, I, the, uh, Zelda also was, like, a huge... So the new Zelda game looks really great, oh. the uh, the big, like, open-world one. But, uh, yeah, dude, sorry, I forgot to talk about it. Is that, like, Wind Waker was, was, like, one of my favorites, too. So I'm definitely really excited for the new Zelda. Um, there, that, that game, Shadow of the Colossus, I know that company, they're making a new game, or they have. I don't know what it is, but oh, was I think is that the, was that the last Guardian? I think maybe that yeah, was that, it? yeah, that's, yeah, maybe yeah, that's not, yeah, it might have already come out, but I want to try that too. For um, sure. If you were into like uh, Mario, like Sunshine and things like that, and each of like those big kind of like platformer ones, there's one coming out. Uh, it's gonna be on PS4. I think you'd like it. It's called a Ukulele. It's made by the same people who made uh, like Banjo Kazooie and Conker's Bad Fur Day. It's by, mm. it's by Playtonic, dude. I think you'd really enjoy that one. I think it's gonna come out for only like. 44 bucks and it's coming to ps4 really? you should definitely check that out man i think it'd be right up your alley if you enjoyed like you, the really? platformers man i'll try to remember to check that out <clears throat> yeah i would i would definitely recommend that one um so out of all like the games that you really enjoy what would be one that you would maybe recommend to like all your fans and all the viewers what's one game that like you would recommend like someone go out and play like right now man that's uh there's so many good ones i mean i would always you know honestly one like I just said, Shadow of the Colossus, dude. That that game, like, have you played it? Oh yeah. Oh, it's a dude, masterpiece. That, that literally, like, there, it was so beautiful, man. Like, I I really like games where, like, same with like Twilight Princess, Zelda Twilight Princess. Like games where, like, the the landscape and everything is just like so beautiful, and like it literally just makes you cry. You know what I mean? Like, so Shadow of the Colossus, I would say, like that that was just like a huge adventure for me, man. Like, I don't know just insane <clears throat> so you're like a fan of the art styles and stuff of games you ever hear of a game called okami i think you'd really like that game i don't think so don't oh think dude it. like when we're done you need to look up okami and look up that art style because like you play a wolf in that game too and like the art in mm -hmm. that it's like you see that and then you see twilight princess and you're like i can kind of see the resemblance here yeah like it's they're both they're both beautiful games but and like in completely different art styles and they're both just mint dude that's dope, man. All right, yeah. so uh, the big one here. So this is going to be a tough one. Are you ready for this? I'm, I think I'm ready, yeah. Let's, uh, let's hear your favorite game or games of all time. And I'm going to limit you to either one or three. So if you can't pick one, you can only pick up to three. 
Of all time, okay. All time, man. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm going to try to give some love to a few different consoles here. I think number one is always going to be probably Mario Kart Double Dash. Nice. Always. Um, it's so tough, man, because most of them are GameCube games. But, dude, there's this game called Pad Upon, also, for PSP. Hmm. And it's it was this game where you had to, like, hit the buttons in a certain sequence. And, like, there were these little dancing, like, stick figures. Dude, it was, like, when I it was a very musical game. And that really, like, was a dick thing. I, th- I played that on, a, like, some of my first tours. So it was a game called Pad Upon, which I really loved. And then, um, man, I guess I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to say Animal Crossing because that was, like, a huge chunk of my life, my childhood. So I guess that's three. But overall, Double Dash for sure. That's a good one, man. Who uh, who were your mains in that one? Because, like, there was, like, you could make different combinations. And, like, depending on the combination, yeah. like, weight was a big factor. Like, if you picked a heavy character oh. and, like, a small character, you would automatically be stuck with, like, a heavy car. So who were your who were your two that you picked? Like, who was your main two? Always. Baby Mario. Baby Luigi. Nice. Because yeah, of the chain shop? Because, like, as soon as you got, yeah, like, chain six, shop. chain shop, gone. Yeah, man. Gone. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, those are always my main. That was that was a good one, man. I really enjoyed that. But um, thanks for taking the time, man, to answer some questions with me, dude. I Absolutely. really appreciate that. Uh, where can uh, where can all these uh, lovely viewers and fans of yours find you on the social medias and things like that? Um, yeah, everything is just say we can fly on my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, my Snapchat is say we can bread because Ooh. someone took say we can fly already. <laughs> oh. But <laughs> yeah, man, say we can fly dot net. You'll find all my stuff and. Yeah, check it cool, out. Cool, man. Well, thanks so much for the interview, man. All the links to um, Say We Can Fly Brittenberry's stuff is going to be down below. Definitely check him out. He's a cool cat. Check out his tunes, man. And again, man, just thanks for the time. Thanks for catching up, bud. Dude, of course. Everyone subscribe to uh, RK Regiment also. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, bro.